Good afternoon. We'd like to thank the Society for the opportunity to present our study investigating the role of ECMO in traumatically injured children using a nationwide database. As indications for ECMO in children continue to expand, its role in children and specifically traumatically injured children continues to evolve. However, few studies have focused on traumatically injured children, what they look like and associated outcomes. Therefore, we sought to examine indications for ECMO in traumatically injured children to understand outcomes and factors associated with survival in this population. We also plan to evaluate trends and practices in the use of ECMO in injured children over the past decade and whether center volume of cannulation and type of trauma center, adult versus pediatric, influences survival. We queried the National Trauma Data Bank for the use of ECMO in children less than or equal to 16 years of age from 2007 to 2017. We characterized the cohort by demographics and baseline characteristics, injury type, severity, and facility. Our primary outcome was in hospital mortality. Secondary outcomes included ICU and hospital length of stay and major complications. We employed multivariable logistic regression to identify factors associated with in-hospital mortality. In total, 105 children from 51 centers were cannulated onto ECMO after suffering traumatic injury from 2007 to 2017. Nearly half of all patients were cannulated at a pediatric trauma center. However, only three centers cannulated more than two children during this time frame, And half of all children were cannulated during the final three years of this study. Here you can see the trend toward increasing volume of cannulations annually from 2007 to 2017. Looking at the demographic and injury characteristics of these children, you can see the median age was 12, most were male, the majority were white, and were severely injured based on injury severity score. Blunt mechanism of injury accounted for over half of all injuries with MVA, drowning, and burns making up the majority of injuries. Most patients suffered polytrauma, most suffered thoracic and extremity injuries, and nearly half suffered a severe head injury. Looking at outcomes, the in-hospital mortality was 45%. Most patients had a prolonged ICU, ventilator, and overall hospital course. A significant percent of patients suffered major complications, including in-hospital cardiac arrest, renal failure, and respiratory failure. Moving on to multivariable regression, based on our univariate analysis, we controlled for cardiac arrest, acute renal failure, stroke, and trauma center size. In-hospital cardiac arrest and acute renal failure were associated with in-hospital mortality. In conclusion, ECMO cannulation in traumatically injured children has increased over the past decade. Half of all cannulations occur at pediatric trauma centers, although few have cannulated a significant number of children. Many children supported by ECMO suffer TBI. Mortality is comparable to other ECMO indications. Complication rates are high. In-hospital cardiac arrest and renal failure are associated with mortality after adjusting for demographics, injury score, mechanism, and complications. Interestingly, injury severity score and trauma center volume are not associated with survival. Thank you.